Warding is a seriously underrated skill, and today we're going to be going over the four don'ts of warding to make sure that you guys know what you're doing when warding. Make sure to crush that like button so that we know that you guys enjoyed the video, and I promise you that we'll keep these types of videos coming your way. If you guys want more in-depth content, don't forget to check out our website GameLeap.com. I will be making guides that are only going to be posted on there, and all of the content on our website is made by challenger level players. If you're looking for something to give you an edge over your competition, then check it out in the description below. The first don't is don't ward close to your lane. Just don't do it. It's not a great idea. A lot of people just default to putting a ward in the closest bush, either in the river or maybe even in lane. This might sound like a good idea, but it's really not. The only worst thing that you can do is place a ward under your tower. What you want to aim to do is use your wards as effectively as possible, and this means placing them in smart locations. For most junglers, they can only enter the river in two locations, and if they have mobility or the blast cone, then there's three. But no matter what, junglers always end up heading into the river. Why? Because that's how they can most efficiently gank lanes, and they want the scuttle crabs there. Also, just to be clear, when I say two ways, I mean two ways on one given side of the map. Obviously, it's mirrored, so there's four total. Starting from the top side of the map, you have the tri-bush area, the area in between red buff and raptors, the area behind your blue buff, and then the area in front of your blue buff that lead into the river. Don't forget to consider the blast cones and those junglers that have mobility. They can go over closer to top lane and over the objective walls at Baron and Dragon. So now that we know exactly where junglers can cross over in order to get into the river and start ganking lanes, where should we put our wards? For starters, the pixel brush is a really popular contender. For those of you who don't know, the pixel brush is that tiny one man sized brush that's on the way to mid lane from Baron and Dragon in the middle of the river. This ward can spot junglers entering from either side, whether it be from their blue buff or their red buff. It also usually spots out junglers who are killing their scuttle crab. It's a very effective ward at protecting mid lane, so if you're playing mid lane or maybe you're playing jungle and have a control ward to place down, consider putting a ward in the pixel brush when you're trying to protect lanes. This is also a consideration that you should make as support, considering that you have the most wards available to you and you don't need them all to just protect your lane. The game also kind of tries to clue you in by showing you where the scuttle crab goes when it dies. That ward is actually very effective at spotting junglers who can take blast cones or even walk into the river from their blue buff. You want to place the ward towards the outside of the scuttle's speed radius. If you put a ward there, you'll be able to spot most of the ramp heading up towards the blue buff and junglers that take blast cone. This is mostly a ward for mid laners, junglers, and sometimes even top laners. If you can place a ward on the ramp leading up into the enemy jungle by their raptors and red buff, you will be able to see them anytime they come out of their raptors or even out of their red buff towards mid lane. If you can combo this with a ward from your top laner or even your jungler towards the enemy tribush or say where the scuttle crab might be, then you can almost effectively cover all of their paths on the top side of the map towards mid lane. The whole point of warding further away from your lane and avoiding warding close to your lane is to get you information as soon as possible. The sooner you see the enemy jungler on the map, the sooner you can react, and this can cause you to survive some ganks that you wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Let's just take a moment and think about Aramis gank. Do you think that a ward on the edge of the bush in river is going to save you from Aramis just sonicking his way into your lane, taunting you? No, it's not you don't have enough time to react. However, if you place a ward further up, say where we mentioned earlier towards the scuttle crab around its speed up radius, you'll be able to see when the Ramus starts his roll and you'll be able to spot him out sooner. That's a lot of extra time to be able to react and back off if you need to. A lot of these ward locations are mostly prevalent in the early game. However, as the game goes on, you will absolutely want wards in the river and on river entrances in order to prevent the enemy team from flanking you. Being clever, creative, and resourceful with your wards has been a great skill to have, especially since they introduced the ward graves. For those of you who don't know, if you place a ward, once it dies, it will leave a little marker for both you and the enemy team to show that a ward was there. If you keep placing them in the same areas, the enemy team will start to notice, and therefore probably start sweeping out your wards. You want to make sure that you cover good angles with your wards, but don't do it too much. Otherwise, people are just going to be able to anticipate them and then play around them. This point ties directly into the second don't of warding. Don't ward without a reason. Before you place a ward, you need to think. Think about what is going on on the map. Think about where the enemy jungler is. Think about what it is that you need to do to win. 
If you're getting the impression that the enemy jungler is on your side of the map, then yes, you absolutely should place a ward watching out for their ganks. But don't just place all of your wards all at once, that's not efficient, and they're gonna run out in 3 minutes. They can just gank you after that point. You want to ward as little as possible to give you as much as possible. In order to do this, you want to consider the factors that we just went over. You don't want a ward if the enemy jungler is on the opposite side of the map. Maybe you would want a ward deep in their jungle to figure out when they are on your side of the map, but you don't just want to place a ward in the river on your side for no reason, and you better not place one just in the river brush because you know where they are already. You don't need that ward. You don't have a reason to place it. Another good example is when facing enemies that have teleport or a teleport ability like Twisted Fate. You might actually want to put a ward deeper in your lane in order to spot them out and see where they're walking. That way you can warn a lane or potentially even stop their ability to teleport by walking up and following them. Please remember, don't just ward without a reason, especially if you are a support, but it also matters if you are just using a warding totem. They are valuable resources and you want to use them well. If you just place them willy nilly, they're gonna get cleared by your opponents and you're gonna be putting gold in their pocket. And this feeds directly into our third point. Don't place wards that you cannot defend. Obviously, this changes depending on what type of ward it is that you're placing. If it's a blue ward, yeah, you can throw that on top of a baron or a dragon and not really worry about an enemy passing by and clearing it, or maybe even spotting people out on an objective and them killing the ward. That is absolutely fine. This concerns the regular wards and the control wards the most. Control wards are very expensive. 75 gold each. If you just place them randomly and have to replace them every two and a half minutes, that is terrible. You're going to end up wasting hundreds, maybe even more than a thousand gold on wards in a game, and they're not going to be doing much for you because you're wasting them. You want to put your control wards in key strategic positions that you can defend. One of the areas we mentioned on our first point about not warding close to your lane, the pixel brush is a popular place for control wards, and it just makes sense. It's a really easy way to get into the river, and usually if you control the pixel brush, you control that side scuttle crab. If you see an enemy walking towards one of your control wards, and it is within your ability to defend it, you absolutely should do so. Don't allow them to clear your ward out for free, and even more, don't allow them to get 25 gold for free. It can be difficult to make the choice as a laner to either farm the wave or go and defend a ward. Usually, Farming the wave is more efficient for yourself. However, if the control ward dying puts you at really great risk of being ganked, you might want to consider choosing to defend the ward over the wave. At that point, the ward has technically done its job. It gave you information on where the enemy jungler or just enemies in general are, and you can play away from that area so as to make yourself less vulnerable to what it is that they're trying to do to you, be it a gank or a tower dive. But just like it says in the name, you lost control over that area. Control wards are a very powerful tool, but they need support. They can't just be left there alone. If you place a ward and it just gets cleared 15 seconds later, that's a really, really big waste and you don't want to let that happen. The same thing goes for regular wards. However, you can use regular wards to help protect your control wards that matter the most. Let's say you're trying to get Baron. You put a control ward in that pixel brush in the middle of the river. Where should you place your regular wards in order to protect the vision control that you have? Well first, consider the angles that your opponents can come from. Regardless of what side you're on, they can absolutely come through the mid lane river brush. So consider putting a ward there to warn you of when your opponents are coming. If you're on blue side, then one of the places that they can come from is their red buff and raptors ramp. So, maybe you want to put a ward closer to their red buff to spot out their movement ahead of time. Even if the wards that you are placing in these locations are getting swept and killed, they are 1. wasting their time on the ward, and 2. still don't have vision in the baron pit or of most of your team. Let's not forget, these wards that are dying are also protecting your control ward, and it gives you an opportunity to set up an active defense and prevent them from clearing your important vision for free and getting to the locations that you want to keep them out of. Depending on your team comp, you might have that dream scenario where you can two-man Baron with, say, a Cassiopeia mid lane and an Olaf jungle. 
the rest of your team should absolutely be placing wards and preventing the enemy from approaching the Barrent Pit. If they're walking over wards and they're sweeping them, they are gonna be scared because you have skill shots and other things that you can engage on them with and scare them away from the pit. You are protecting the most important vision and more importantly, vision denial that the control wards give you. And you're doing this by playing up with your normal wards and playing aggressively to defend them and your control wards. With that scenario out of the way, we're gonna be moving on to our last point. And our last one is don't just keep warding totem all game. You have three options, the Warding Totem, Sweeping Lens, and Scryer's Orb. Each of them are equally important, but most people tend to just keep the Yellow Trinket all game because it's what the game starts you with. Even if you don't buy it, it automatically puts it in your inventory once you walk out of base. While the Yellow Trinket is very good, there are absolutely reasons why you'd want to switch to Red Trinket early on and Blue Trinket at level 9 once it unlocks. In most cases, as a support, once you unlock the wards from your support item, you want to switch the red trinket. You already have enough wards thanks to the support item, and you want to focus on denying vision with your trinket. When playing jungle, starting with the red trinket or swapping to it relatively early on in the game can be really, really powerful. If you happen to notice that somebody who you are trying to gank is playing a little bit odd, and you think that they have a ward down, just sweep it. They might know that you're on that side, but they won't have the security that the ward would have given them for the next X amount of minutes. A lot of the times, the trinkets that you're going to buy as a top, mid, or AD carry change with your role. If you're playing a pretty tanky top laner that's going to be sticking with your team a lot of the time towards the end of the game, you're going to want to buy Sweeping Lens. You're going to be leading the charge into the fog of war, and you want to be sweeping away enemy vision as you do so. But if you're playing a sort of solo lane split push style, you might instead want to go to a blue trinket. The blue trinket will let you get deep vision without having to walk into the enemy jungle, therefore allowing you to spend more time pushing the lane. For some champions, there's special situations, like Jax. Jax can Q jump to wards that he places with the yellow trinket, so he almost always keeps that trinket no matter what, even though he's a split push style champion for the most part. Just like there's generally two types of champions and styles in the top lane, there's also that for mid lane, if you're playing an assassin, usually you want to end up picking up sweeping lens. That way you can walk into the enemy jungle, start clearing wards and denying vision and killing people who you catch out. On the other side, if you're playing a long range mage or a control mage, maybe you want to end up opting for blue trinket in order to ward deep into the enemy jungle. A lot of the time, you're going to be forced to stick in lane and match pushes from the enemy mid laner. Mid laners really like to push and shove waves quickly, and you don't want to just allow minions to run down your lane, denying you vision and forcing you to catch waves. Having a blue trinket instead of a yellow one as a mage that plays this style lets you be more creative and you don't have to play up in the lane 24-7, especially as the game goes on where it gets more risky. Obviously, these examples that I'm giving are generic and should change depending on what your team is doing. If you notice that your jungler and top lane both have sweeping lens, maybe as a mid laner or even as a support, you don't want to get a third one because that might just be overkill. Think about what your team has and buy accordingly. And with that, we've reached the end. Remember, as with everything, you don't need to learn all of these at once. You can take your time learning one of these and applying one of these in each of your games. And as you pick them up, you'll be able to do more and more. First was don't ward close to your lane. Second, don't ward without a reason. Third, don't place wards you can't defend. And lastly, don't just keep your warding trinket all game. If you guys want more in-depth content, don't forget to check out our website, GameLeap.com. I will be making guides that are only going to be posted on there. And all of the content on our website is made by challenger level players. If you're looking for something to give you an edge over your competition, then check it out in the description below.